I'm Camille Salazar Hadaway. Joining me as always, we have Steve Vidbari. We got Aaron Caboose Coast. And guess what? We got Malik Shilp, who is also uh, recovering from appendicitis. So, yeah, it's, you know, it's bad time to be in pain, but good time to play video games, you know? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I love Take a that. week off, kick back. I'm hey, glad you're doing all right, though. Exactly. Thank you. It was it was rough because I got my COVID shot like two days after I started recovering. So then I was just like back in bed. Oh. But yeah. I was able to play some good games over the weekend, just kind of relax. How about you guys? How was your uh, week and weekend? Well, it was sunny here um, mm -hmm. where we are, yep. and that was nice. So I like every excuse to do anything and everything I have to do on the patio. Seriously. That's yeah. what I was doing. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. No, uh, I, I definitely got some sun this weekend as well. Went out a bit. Played some Resident Evil 7, though, when the sun went down. 8, you mean, uh, right? Got, Resident Evil 8. Sorry, yeah, not yeah. Resident Evil 7. <laughs> we were talking about Resident Evil 7. Yes, yeah, were, yeah. Um, Played some Resident Evil 8. Uh, which is fun when the sun went down. So got got some spooks in, which was good. Uh, and it was a it was a nice weekend. I'm glad the sun's out. It's it's feeling like summer. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. As much as the, the weather tempted me to come outside, you know, it, it's so hard when the Normandy is just calling my name, with the, <laughs> the Mass Effect the legendary <laughs> collection, Resident Evil as well. Like, yeah, it, it's just it kind of sucks that, you know, we've been waiting for this this compact area of just games coming out one after another. And then of course the weather gets really nice in Canada. Yeah. So, Well, it's funny. I was telling Steve before we started, I was like, this is when you take your TV and your console outside. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, knows what's up. Yeah. we're gaming, <laughs> we're getting the it. games we love, but we're also soaking in the sun. Yeah. This and one thing that these new consoles game. really like is direct sunlight, yeah. making them overheat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It'd be cool uh -huh. if you could actually put your consoles, like the new consoles, out in the sun, you know, give it a little sunlight and they just grow more storage space. Oh. I mean, that'd be really cool. Yeah. I'd get there into that that bit of gardening there. Sony, just throw some <laughs> solar panels onto the new say. PS5. You're good Ooh. to go. You don't need to plug it in. You're just ready to go anywhere. Oh, no. Wait a second. Million dollar ideas. Detachable panels on the side of the PS5. Solar panel replacements. Oh, oh my God. Ooh. We got to stop giving away good ideas on this show, guys. Million dollar idea right there waiting gonna... to be bought out. We Patented are just so... Oh, are you Jim making... Jim Ryan. Yeah, yeah Jim okay. Ryan. Million dollar idea here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, obviously, Steve has some other tech because he didn't even dial the number. He just picked up the phone and no. he just thought it. I'm always and... on the phone with Jim Ryan. We're oh, spitballing okay. ideas. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> well, we're not making calls uh, to Jim Ryan on this squadcast, at least not yet. Instead, we're going to be talking about the Epic versus Apple court case. There's so much information coming out. So this is kind of like your crash course to everything you need to know about that court case and the interesting fact like we didn't even think we would get a preview of of the behind the scenes going on um, yeah. when it comes to deals like this. So we're going to be talking about what this court case is. We're going to talk about the inner workings of how crossplay works, uh, specifically with Fortnite and other platforms. Then we're going to be talking about interesting facts that we didn't expect coming out of this trial. And as well, if we have time, we're going to be talking about another company that is also facing a lawsuit in the gaming world. Um, mm. So let's kick it off. I see uh, chats going there. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Let us know your thoughts in chat, as well as if there's any clippable moments that you want to continue to debate um, after the stream. Hit us up on our Twitter at Squad State. But let's get the conversation going. Steve, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, the other thing I just want to preface is that I think... There's a high chance that we're going to get a lot wrong here, but yes. when, we're, when we're talking about this conversation, none of us are lawyers. None of us are, you know, well, I mean, to Twitch prevent... chat knows everything, right? Twitch chat's all knowing. So they'll well, I was going to say, exactly. <laughs> I was going to put the onus on them and say, if, if there, there's anything that we need uh, a correction on, please let us know and uh, chime in in the chat. But yeah, kind of just getting into um, the top level of, of what this case is. So the official trial started on May 3rd. And at the at the start of it, it was predicted that it would go for about 15 to 17 days. So right now, uh, as we're recording this on the 17th, we're on the tail end of this thing. Mm. Um, yeah, it's it's being uh, overseen by U.S. Judge District uh, Yvonne Gonzalez Rogers. Uh, she's looking after the the case itself, and the bulk of it is that uh, Epic filed a lawsuit against Apple over antitrust concerns and 
controversial apps app store policies uh if you if everyone remembers going back last year app, epic introduced a direct payment system on uh fortnite in the ios and android um version of the game which basically just allowed all the players to purchase v bucks and uh microtransactions directly through epic which sidelined apple and google um which if you guys know one of the the industry norms going around like with a lot of companies is that anyone that has like a marketplace usually charges a 30 percent commission rate so what epic introduced was a way to just sideline that 30 percent commission so that anyone purchasing microtransactions just got the full amount and so did epic so apple was um not involved at all so yeah they quickly removed fortnite out of the the app store google also follow, followed suit and uh removed fortnite from the android or the google play store and then it became this like big back and forth thing and people remember epic retaliated by releasing like that 1984 parody video within fortnite and then they created that hashtag free fortnite campaign which was really weird i didn't like <laughs> yeah. that part no <laughs> that was, was like really that was a step weird. too far um but yeah Random. that Especially yeah. there's a bunch of kids playing Fortnite. Like, That's what I mean. Like, they turn into, like, on. little warriors. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Fortnite's free. Come on, guys. Yeah. Free Plus, it's not, it's not yeah, like yeah. Epic's not making a lot of money um, off of this. So it was kind of that that part of it was kind of weird because they position themselves like they're standing up for the little yes. guys. But then really, then it should be like, you know, free video game freedom on these platforms, not free mm -hmm. Fortnite specifically. Yeah. Well, Steve, exactly. you brought up a good point. I just want to mention really quick. Yeah, you brought up like please. the 30% too. And Google seeing all of this, I don't know if you guys saw that news. They're like, July, we're going to go back down to 15%. I, we don't want any of this. Like, we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it did uh, stir the pot a lot, but yeah. So uh, after after the campaign was started of free Fortnite, they filed the actual lawsuit against Apple, and then in short time, Apple actually filed a countersuit against Apple. And then, yeah, over the months now, they've just been going through depositions and preparing documents. And this is the first trial that App Apple CEO Tim Cook will actually be making a testimony. He's he's due to make that testimony sometime this week uh, in mm -hmm. a couple of days. So it'll be interesting to see exactly you know, what comes out of his testimony, because as people know, he is a really buttoned up person. He he has he maintains like a really strict, like personal um, image uh, for the public. But yeah, uh, other uh, Apple um, heads like um, Phil Schri Sch Schiller uh, and then Epic Games uh, CEO Tim Sweeney have also been uh, providing testimonies as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it kind of just... Um, raises this question like what could this mean for gaming if anything mm -hmm. um yeah just kind of want to pass it on to the the panel here well yeah i think it's very interesting with this court case because we never knew we never really i think gave it much thought um mm -hmm. in terms of you know we always fought for cross-platform fortnite was that game that kind of paved the way for cross-platform gaming and that makes gaming more accessible I think for people on whatever platform they are playing, be it mobile, console, or PC. But we never actually thought how these contracts um, with these publishers being offered on all these different platforms could differ. Um, so I, I love the fact that we're kind of getting this inside look at how that ecosystem actually breaks down. Um, and mm -hmm. we're finding out that, you know, it's not actually as fair as we would have thought it to be. And I think it would definitely shift depending which way this goes. Um, it could either still remain the same if Apple wins this case, or if Apple loses, then this could mean a complete overall. Uh, overhaul on how their store works the apple store works yep. um yes. especially yeah. what games will be offered on the apple store with publishers who might have thought 30 percent was way too much money and now it's like all right now they're dropping that down maybe more games could become available on the apple store so so in that it yeah. does become a bit of a fight for the little guys right it does become a bit of a fight for a lot of the apps that you see on the app store that are kind of that they have no choice right they have yes. to be there they're, they're gonna have to take that uh, that deal that 30 percent because that's just the way that it is and if epic is to win this court case then yeah it will make a big shift in the app store it will make a big shift for a lot of those smaller games that end up in the app store that kind of get screwed over mm -hmm. by apple's policies so i can see 
why they're they're fighting the good fight in that aspect. But again, I do agree that that whole hashtag free Fortnite thing, the campaign, playing the ad in game for a bunch of yeah. kids, it was yeah. super weird. And apparently there was some stuff coming out about like people jumping into the actual like court case <laughs> and like screaming on the mics oh, and no. stuff when the, when oh, it started. I did, really? I don't know if you heard I didn't, about that. No, I didn't no, hear about didn't. that at all. Yeah, there was apparently wow. people jumping in and like screaming over the mics and they had to get that all sorted before they were even wow. able to like start this whole thing. Yeah. So like that's the kind of stuff that spawned from that ad, I think. Mm -hmm. um, this whole situation, it's interesting. It's unprecedented for sure. We've never really seen anything like this. Two juggernauts right now. Mm -hmm. Apple as a company facing off against Epic Games, which has become a juggernaut because of Fortnite. Um, and all the information that's rolled out because of this, I'm sure we're going to talk about it throughout this episode. It's crazy. It is crazy to think about, crazy to talk about. But yeah, as Camille was saying, like, if Epic wins this, then it will make a huge shift in uh, in games and specifically mobile games. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's very important. Like, Epic Games and Apple, neither one of them is your friend. They, these are two giant corporations. Like, they're not trying to do you a service by saving you a little bit of money, like for purchasing V Bucks. That is for them exclusively. Yeah. Mm. But what I will say is I don't think I think that Epic is using Fortnite kind of as the big sledgehammer to break down the walls for its smaller games that it's going to try to bring to iOS because they are yeah. acquiring games mm -hmm. just like Xbox is. So I think that Fortnite is kind of the property, you know what I mean? That is the warhead that you use to start kind of making some leeway. Well, mm -hmm. I think you're right because what other game could you do that with? Yeah. yeah exactly. Maybe maybe Call of Duty, but they're doing fine in microtransactions. On exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It is funny that you know Epic does approach it altruistically, saying you know we are trying to you know speak for the industry and kind of fight for everyone at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, but it, I think it is worth mentioning though that Apple has um, come around and now offers like lower commission rates for smaller developers and publishers. So any any developer or publisher making less than 1 million uh, US a year only has to pay 15%. And mm -hmm. I think going back to kind of what you were saying, Malik, earlier, I think this is the crux of like what ramifications we could see coming out of this is that other companies will start looking at their commission rates mm -hmm. and start saying, okay, maybe we're in trouble if we keep this industry standard of 30% because we're getting a lot of pushback, as you see with Google and Apple. Um, I mean... Epic was the one that really broke that mold and saying that, you know, we're now offering 88% to go towards the developers while we're only going to take 12. Mm -hmm. um, Microsoft recently did something similar on the uh, Microsoft store and that they're only going to take 12% as well. Maybe this is the time that, you know, Sony gets put under the microscope or another company of, of similar akin, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I will probably get into it later, but... Even if Epic wins this, even if, you know, they come out on top in whatever way that looks like, they aired a lot of people's dirty laundry. And I don't think a lot of companies are going to be happy about that. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that that's the thing about these court cases. Whenever a big company like Epic or Apple goes to court, we're also going to, you know, you're going to be able to discover something that we didn't know before um, that obviously the companies were trying to keep under wraps. But it's very rare that we see other companies' businesses be aired out in front of everyone through these court cases. Um, so it's interesting, like we're getting news about Sony, about Xbox and Nintendo. And it, it's it's not just general news. It's very specific yep. news. Mm -hmm. um, so yep. it's going to be interesting how Epic's relationship with their platform partners um, does develop throughout. I don't personally think that this court case and you know all the dirty laundry that was aired about those other platforms will really affect the relationship Epic has um, because at the end of the day, everyone's in it to get more money. And they know that Fortnite sells, they know Epic Games do sell. Um, so they're gonna want them on their platform. My thing is now when we get into these instances of like a huge gaming company now coming up with a court case, do we think it's as big news for everyone outside of the industry? Cause we all work in the industry, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're paying attention to it because it's interesting to us. We know what ramifications it could have, but do you think going through a court case like this does affect the sales for these companies as they're going through the court case? I, uh, I don't think so. I don't know. I, I, I'll, Malik, go ahead. 
I, I don't think sales, but I think it's a very important antitrust precedent uh, to be set because we haven't had uh, like a big uh, antitrust legislation in the tech company or the tech world for a long time. Um, mm. And now as we see, because there was, I don't remember what podcast I was watching, but they were talking about how there's no more really like second party studios, right? Mm-hmm. You're either first party, you work for a company or you're a third party and you just partner with a big corporation yeah we see xbox making these big acquisitions and you know we got the news that starfield is going to be a pc and xbox exclusive so now this is going to set the precedent of like okay where can you and can't restrict not just games but microtransactions because Mm. we know that that is so huge if you are restricting microtransactions to your platform so you can artificially skyrocket the price that is going to be you know very bad for consumers um and i think that that's something that this court case can help but overall i don't feel like it's going to have waves or ripples uh in the entertainment industry as a whole Mm. Mm. interesting how about you steve what do you think I'm I'm kind of in, in the middle. I don't exactly know. Um, I think w- we talked about like the commission rates. And I think that's going to play into a big part, regardless if Apple or Epic wins. The other thing I do think about is that it's going to open up a conversation of whether smartphones should or will be considered open source pieces of tech. Mm-hmm. Because you look at something like a PC, for instance, th- those are considered open source because you can download apps from directly through a publisher versus going through a marketplace and something like that and in similar fashion like a smartphone is essentially just a pc or like a macbook if you will like you're doing the almost the exact same thing so why can't those be treated as open sources i don't really understand that so maybe maybe there's a conversation to be had there um but like malik said this really does come down to antitrust policies and the fact that no matter what or how many times Apple goes into court for, uh, over antitrust concerns, they always win. This is the first yes. time that even when this was yeah. announced and this is the first time that I felt like maybe there's a shot that something can happen here because Epic is a huge company uh, just beyond Fortnite is huge. So if anyone can really take them to, to bat, it might be them. And I'm really interested to see where this all comes down uh, later this week. Agreed. Yeah. And on top of that, too, like there are studios that are dedicated to converting PC games to be viable on iOS, on Apple computers, mm-hmm. Macs, whatever. So that is going this is going to be important too going forward, because if people are porting their games and they have microtransactions, even if it's on a Mac, even though, you know, PC is technically open source, there's a possibility that if Apple wins this, they can still restrict microtransactions on, you know, uh, their hard held and or their hardwired and not handheld markets. Right. I do think it's interesting too, because I don't think non gamers as well understand how this could impact this court case, depending on how it um, turns out in favor of Epic or Apple will also affect how people get their apps, right? Like Mm -hmm. the whole thing Epic is also making a case for is that through all these platforms, you have to go through that specific platform store to get your handle on games. Um, Whether it be the Google store, Google Play Play Store. I have an Android and I still don't remember the name of that, but, or um, (laughs) the Apple store or a PlayStation store or the Xbox store. They're arguing that you should have a third party um, mm-hmm. app. You should be able to get whatever games you're purchasing through other um, other uh, other stores. What do you guys think? Because I feel like if you are if you are able to get games, like it could go double sided. Like I feel like this is for those small developers who could now offer more indie games on these third party platforms. Obviously, benefit by getting more of their sales money um, directly to the publisher. But then Mm. on the other side, even if there is a third party store, I feel like people are still going to first primarily go to the Apple store. So when developers now are maybe going for third party, they may not get the benefits of being in the Apple store, whether it is working with Apple directly um, with funding a project or what like on Apple Arcade or whatever it may be, right? Um, So how do you guys feel about that? A possible third party answer to getting games? 
Uh, I mean, that's certainly an option that could be interesting. And I wonder even if like Epic Games would be willing to offer a service like that because well, they, they already do on PC, right? right on PC. Mm -hmm. That's why, like I'm saying, maybe they'll be able to offer something like that on your on your mobile devices. I don't know how that would work or how that would be possible, but that's certainly something that could be uh, an answer if they weren't to win this court case. Um, I just don't know. Just as you were mentioning, there is like a pro and a con, a push and a pull to it, right? The pro being, of course, that on this third party system, those rates are going to be lowered. It's not going to be that 30% that Apple takes from you. But at the same time, your app being on the app store, Apple's official app store already gives you that that step ahead, that leg up on uh, on those other devices because the app store and, and just Apple products in general are so massive um, and so many people are searching or buying games or paying additional money for certain games uh, to the point where just a ridiculous amount of revenue is coming in and you potentially miss out on that. So like while you might be making up on revenue made from a, a smaller rate being taken from this third party publisher, um, you, may, you, you may be missing out on additional revenue to be made from your app just being available on Apple's app store. So it's, uh, it's an interesting solution if they were to try and explore it. I just don't know how successful it would be in comparison. Yeah, and they brought that up too uh, earlier in kind of the debate, uh, I guess it were, about how there could be the chance of them not just offering their games and their services on a browser because you can't you can't download anything from uh, Safari. I think it is that Apple uses, yeah. Um, yeah. but for them to offer their own kind of network because it was a big deal when Epic when we noticed that those Epic games and they were starting to put more revenue out than Steam they were starting to to make some headway and one of the things that the judge asked that so weird is there just like they made that sly comment of well if you had your own app could you offer explicit sexual content and they're like no that's that's not what it's about i think that you're absolutely right caboose right they they're gonna lose out on a lot of visibility um mm -hmm. and like a, a lot of that attention and kind of upping their player base as they were but at the yeah. same time it's Fortnite, right it's it's a huge game that is going to have microtransactions no matter what and yeah. me personally i'm pro consumer i don't mind spending the extra time to go check humble bundle to check steam yeah. to check epic to check yeah. xbox game like if i can find a better deal somewhere then that's awesome and i think what epic if they're allowed to might do is find a way so that way when you go to get those microtransactions have that option where it redirects you to the epic app where you know you can get a discounted rate and maybe it's not they offer you know as explicit downloads for their games there but that's like the hub for where you have the microtransactions for all of their games yeah you yeah. you bring up a really good point and I want to add to that because I feel like that your point of view is a reflection of the times of like, we are the gaming generation. Mm -hmm. I think before uh, gaming was more niche, right? There weren't a lot of people that wanted it as accessible, right? That were, that were only willing to play games if it was the big titles. But right. you look at games like Among Us, uh, Fall Guys, all these smaller games that made it big because we are in a generation where gamers are exploring different options. They're not just playing the triple A's. We're living in a time where PC gamers are pretty much calling the shots on Twitch, right? They're, yeah. they're letting yeah. us know what are the hot games. So having a third party uh, marketplace, if you will, would kind of make sense for the times and what really gamers want um, as a mm -hmm. consumer, uh, because we, we, we want that freedom. Yeah, and Apple even admitted that they don't have a competitor, like, on iOS or, like, anywhere. Like, they there's no competitor for them. So, technically, they are a trust, but it's, like, that aspect of, like you said, Steve, before. They've never lost one of these court cases, like, ever. Mm -hmm. No. And, yeah, going back to, like, the, the pro-consumer move, I'm, I'm down for a third-party solution because it incentivizes competition mm -hmm. all it's going to do is put apple against the wall and, and you know what Let, let's just see how it goes because it's like you said um maybe maybe it does stint um you know giving some smaller developers the spotlight or additional resources but let the market speak at least give them the chance you know to mm -hmm. have that to have that fight out there um and then and then yeah if, if it all goes poorly then th those developers can make the ch uh, decision and say okay well we tried it out we'll go back to the app store 
Mm -hmm. And we'll take that 30% commission. Ah. But yeah, just to force the developers and publishers to say, no, you have to give us this amount or you're not existing on iOS or or Android. Um, yeah, I, I just don't like it. I and... also wonder, you know, like we, we, we look at games like Fall Guys or we look at Among Us in yeah. the last year and kind of the success that they had because they are kind of games on a budget. They are games that everyone can just jump in and play, whether for free, whether for like 10, 20 bucks, you know. But I also wonder if a lot of that has to factor in with people just looking for like a quick and easy game that they can jump into, especially during COVID, during the pandemic, mm -hmm. everything that we've gone through the last year. A lot of people don't really have the money to spend. They don't have $90, especially here in Canada, mm -hmm. plus tax to, th to fork over for a brand new AAA game every single week or every month. So they want to get something like an Among Us, like a Fall Guys. That's just, first of all, a lot of fun, but also just a cheap and easy game to play with your friends and have fun with. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be something that you're you're forking over a ton of time or money into. Mm -hmm. um, and I wonder if that plays a factor into it, because then, yes, if this if the pandemic continues kind of in the trajectory that it's going and we're still kind of going to be dealing with the ramifications for the next year or so, then if they do introduce like a third party system where you can get apps on, I'm sure plenty of people will invest their money into it because it could just be cheaper or it could just be given back to to the indie developers in some way. Yeah, and we talked about this a little bit uh, in the pre-show of like me personally, I didn't get Mass Effect the Legendary Edition because mm -hmm. I just purely don't have sixty hours to dump into right. you know, a game. Right. Again. Any it's not game, always money. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I like with Among Us, with Fall Guys, like he said, it's these social games, not necessarily low budget, right? But they are just lower production, and they're doing amazing. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but in China, Fortnite China. They, there's no microtransactions. You can't Whoa, buy what? things. Yeah, you cannot yeah. buy things with real money, um, just because of their like laws over oh, there. Oh yeah, that and makes sense. And you earn everything in game just by playing the game. Yeah. yeah. And that just shines such a large light because we all know how big of a gaming market China is. Every company wants to break into that market. But for Fortnite to be putting up the, the billion dollar sales that it does every year in microtransactions yeah. without having acts without having microtransactions accessible in one of the gaming biggest gaming markets in the world, that says something about where they're at. You're absolutely right. You're yeah. absolutely right. And and that's the thing, right? Like we are we are at this time, we're in North America. Well, in gaming, I would say it's just all about in-game purchases, right? Like nonstop. That's the only way now that or publishers and developers are shifting their focus um, to make more money from these games after launch. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this this actually has a huge impact. Like this court case really can shift that ideology based on who wins the court case and what the judge rules in favor of, because then a lot of publishers will have to be like, okay, well, we, we don't want to be walking a thin line and be pulled into court because it's going to get more trickier. I don't think ever, you know, in-app purchases will disappear because it just makes yeah. too much money. Yeah. Um, but maybe there could be a better handle of it, which I'm hoping this court case kind of sheds light on and forces publishers to make better decisions when they're offering in-app purchases or in-game purchases. <laughs>